So this was the place where the only slaves were being assembled. Here is called the back of the island. Where I'm standing right now is the back of the island. So this was the place is called the branding ground. They'll put a hot iron inside the fire and brand them on the back of the slaves to differentiate them when they realize that they both speak the same language. So here, if all the slaves have been branded now, they'll take them, put them inside the ship because they are already differentiated at this point in time. They'll put them inside the ship and the ship will take them direct to Gore Island. And from Gore Island, they'll be bound to America. So some of them will be taken to Brazil, America, and of course in the U.S. So this was the island uh, in which our ancestors were being taken. And of course, it was the island which was first occupied by the Portuguese in 1456. So the island was first, was first called San Domingo because at that time there was a fisherman from the village called Sica. So the, his name was called San Domingo. Whenever he was tired from I mean, fishing, he would come here in this island in order to relax. So the people of Sica named the island called uh, as San Domingo. But when the Portuguese came, they captured this island in 1456 and of course in 1651 they built the fort. So this is the first bridge which was built by the, yes, it's the first bridge which was built by the Portuguese. This was the first landing site. So you can, as you can see, these are the railways built by the, 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 the Portuguese. And in fact, this is where the ship normally anchored at that time when they first captured the island. So it was very strong. Still now you can see the remains here. So it, will, it was the railways built by the Portuguese in order like when the ship comes from Senegal, the ship have to come and anchor here. So when the ship anchored here, they will bring in slaves and put them inside the ship and the ship will have to go back to Gore Island. So this was the first I mean, ship landing site in the North Bank region of the Gambia, built by the Portuguese in 1456 when they captured the island initially. So you can see now, still now the remains are here. Of course, people can see as an eyewitness. So it is called the first landing site when the European captured this island. They built this I mean, landing site in order for the ship to be easily anchored so that it can ease the movement of the slaves and transport them finally to Gore Island in Senegal. So now, where we are heading to is called the prison. We are now going to the, to the main structure itself, the prisons, where Kunta and his people were have been huge for four months, sorry, for four weeks, four nights, with little water and little food. And most of them also, they died in this island. So follow me, let me show you the prisons. Where I'm standing right now is called the, the prison. The prison of the island. The most dangerous place in this island is this place, the prison. So you can see this is a hole, which is meant like, for example, here is where they will stand drinking their alcohol and of course smoking so they will train in food for our ancestors here with the use of this hole so our slaves inside uh, this, the, the people inside this i mean this hole of course they will be struggling for food now because they have been hooked here for four weeks four nights with little water and little food so the european will come here they will gather here they will be throwing food inside here so our people will be struggling for food so ra right now i'm taking you inside so that you can see the I mean, how to call it? The prison. So the prison is, the way it was built, is very, very dangerous, just like a hole inside. So the prison is very, very dark, especially at night. So you can see about 20 people you will be put inside this hole. And they will be standing like this for four weeks, four nights, standing. And they will be defecating and urinating inside this prison, which was very sad. So the Europeans here, they will come at the side, for example, when they realize that these people are hungry and they are making noise, they will be throwing in food. So the moment they throw food now, people will be scrambling in order for to take, I mean, take the food for their survival. So this place, at this point in time here, is the survival of the fittest and the strongest. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, this is the, this is, 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 is a hook now. It is where a chain was hooked like this. So Kunta and his people were hooked like this. And they were standing for a long hours, for many days, they will be standing with chains. They will give you little food and of course little water. They will be defecating here and of course urinating. So it was built in order to torment or to torture our slave. So the Europeans were very brutal and unkind to our people. So all this stuff is happened here in our country. So for a period of 400 years they colonized our people. They came here, they captured our ancestors and they bring them here in this island called Andrew Island at that time. So in this Andrew Island, this hall was built called the prison. So this prison was very, very dangerous. As you can see, the place is very dark. How can you expect a human being to live in this prison? So it's very sad. The Europeans, they were cruel and brutal at that time towards the African people. Even when you put here a food, it can rot in within two days or three days, most of a human beings. 
So this was a chain. We are some of the slaves we are hooked now. You can see an example. You can see because of you know it stayed for a long enough amount of time here, so it have to you know to lose it, it, it quality. So that's why it was removed. But when you go to the museum there, you will see it. So they were standing like this for a long period of time in order for them to wait for the ship to arrive. And when the ship arrives, the chain is going to be removed from them and then they'll be taken to the back of the island to be branded. So when they realize these people, they speak the same language, they are taken to the back of the island to be branded. They will use a hot iron, a hot iron and put it inside a fire until when it is hot, they'll stamp it on their body to differentiate the slaves. If they realize you and I will speak Maninkas, or you and I will speak all of now, they will use a brand to differentiate us. So that at least they can use what they call divide and rule. Some of them are taken to America, some of them Europe, some of them Brazil. Because they don't want us to communicate any longer. So the praising was very, very dangerous. Now you can see, also see here, it is where they normally throw their food. So here is where they will throw their food. So when they throw in their food now, the slaves will be scrambling our ancestors to grab the food for them to consume for their survival. So the white man was not a friend to the black man. So all this was meant in order to take their minds away from them. To ensure that they are superior to the black people. For 400 years, all this thing happened here in our little country. Okay, now, where we are heading to right now is the place where the slaves were being branded at the time. Because as I mentioned earlier, when they realize you and I will speak the same language inside the cell, or inside the, the how to call it, the, 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 the place where I mean, we have been I mean, kept, they will bring us all out here, and of course, they will brand. So this was the place where the, all the slaves have been assembled. Here is called the back of the island. Where I am standing right now is the back of the island. As you can see, the, 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 the runway, the bridge. So here, if all the slaves have been branded now, they will take them, put them inside the ship, because they are already differentiated at this point in time. They will put them inside the ship, and the ship will take them direct to Gore Island. And from Gore Island, they will be bound to America. So some of them will be taken to Brazil, America and of course in the Europe. So this was the place is called the branding ground. They will put a hot iron inside the fire and brand them on the back of the slaves to differentiate them when they realize that they both speak the same language. So this was place. So these stones were put here in order to identify. So here it's just called the back of the island where the slaves are being branded at that time. All right. Right now, as you are seeing, I'm approaching a cannon, and this was the first cannon which was tested in this island. That's why the size o is very small. So this is the smallest island so far found in this, in, this, in this island. So this cannon was placed here in order to, for example, when they realize that another European or another people are coming, so they will fire. They'll put the cannonball inside and, and fire so that at least they can know that there are people who occupy this island. So you can see it's a cannon here. That's why it is smaller in size. The first cannon ever tested in this island at that time was called was this cannon, of course. That's why, as you can see, it is small in size, but very, very powerful. So the Europeans at that time, they were using cannons in order to threaten their fellow Europeans when they want to come near to this island called Andrew Island. So now, of course, that's the tower of the island, as you can see. The tower of the island, it was not built like, I mean, in this format, it was like a wooden tower. But because of, like, the tower, I mean, lose its quality. So they decided to, I mean, put it, like, in an iron format. So this tower here is meant to send signal to the, to the other Europeans who want to come closer to the island. So at night, during that time now, you will see they, it, it will light, it will so light, to indicate that there are people who are already in this island. So the tower also was meant you know, to show the Europeans that there are people who are already staying or who are already I mean, occupying this island called the tower. So you can see it is very long. During that time, when the Portuguese, I mean, captured this island at that time, so the tower was already established here. So as if you are European and you are coming towards this island, you will realize that there is a tower sending a signal that there are other people that are already occupying this island and then you return back. So this is called the tower of the island at that time. And then where I am standing here right now, this also is the biggest cannon in this island. The weight of this cannon is 620. So, so it's very, very powerful at that time. The European too now, they also decided to slot in what they call the cannonball and it will set a fire in order to torment other Europeans at that time. Now, as you can see, this is I mean, a, build, a tabla which was built so that at least when people come, they will know what had transpired here in this island. So this is called Kunta Kinta Island or James Island at that time. So when it was captured by the Portuguese, 
it was named Andrew Island because I mean, Andrew died in here, here in this island because of malaria. So when Andrew died in this island, they named the island after him Andrew Island. But the first name of this island was called San Domingo. Because there was a fisherman called San Domingo. Whenever he's tired from fishing, he'll come and, you know, have a rest here in this place. So the people of Sika named the island called San Domingo. But now, when the island was attacked and captured by the Portuguese, they also named, changed the island. They changed the name of the island. From Andrew Island now to what they call James Island, which was named after King James of Britain II. So now, as you can see, this is a structure of the island. So it's trying to show you, like, who lived on this island at that time. So as military and training posts in the first half of the 18th centuries, James Island accommodated Royal African Company's officials and their staffs. So in this island at that time, there were 33 soldiers, 8 merchants or traders, 13 writers and 20 artisans, and 32, of course, castle slaves. So you can see, these are small castles called slave castles. So in these castles where slaves were been captured, we are put inside these castles. So at that time, there were what they call 32 slave capsules, I mean castles, 20 artisans, 13 writers, and 8 merchants, 33 soldiers here in this island. So this is just what they call the structure of the island. It was put here by the government government in order to ease the smooth explanations of historians whenever they come into this island. Now, we'll be moving fast to the dressing room or the dining room now. So you can come, I will show you the dining room of this island. Now, before I go to the dining room, I will also show you here. Now, as you can see, this, 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 I mean, Baba is a branch which has been connected to another Baba. So a cannon was fired and the cannon caught the branch of that particular Baba trees. So when it fell down, it continued to survive. So this is a branch of a Baba. As you can see, in fact, there's a mark written here on that Baba. So this place is called the dining room. It is where all the slaves will be required to come here and then form a line. So when they realize that a particular slave is failing to abide by their rules and regulations, he's been taken and as to a solitary confinement. He or she is going to be confined in his own prison. So this place that we are seeing, here is called the dining room. They'll bring all the slaves here and then they'll, 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 they'll form a line. So they, that's the time they will realize if a slave refuses to do their instruction, then the slave is been taken to what you call solitary confinement. And this place that we are seeing here it is where Andrew was buried. So this was the place exactly where Andrew was buried. So that's why when Andrew was buried in this place, they named this island after him, Andrew Island. So you can see it's a very large place now. Andrew was a councillor at that time, who when he died as a result of malaria and other sicknesses, then he was buried here in this ground. So this was the burial ground of Andrew. And then here is the dining room. As you can see where I'm standing right now, it's called the water sea stand. Because at that time, it was very difficult for them to have water in this island. Because like the area is being surrounded, it's an island surrounded by a salty water. So they decided to come with an idea like to establish what they call a water sea stand. So this I mean, water sea stand is built in order for them to store water. It stopped as a storage of water for the Europeans at that time when they were staying. So during the rainy season, they will open this place. So when the water, I mean, fill this place, they will close it. And they will be using this water maybe for their, I mean, for, for them to take sour, for them to drink, and of course, do, I mean, for their cooking stuffs. So this is called the water system, as you can see. Yes, it was very built and plastered, very nice. Yes, so I am here where I'm standing right now. It's like the water system, as I was explaining. So this is the place built by the Portuguese in order for them to have a place at least where they will store water for maybe years. So this is a water system, you know. It, when it was built, it was plastered very nice so that the water will look very clean and decent. So here is where they will have access to water for drinking, cooking, and of course, maybe for taking sour. Because the island was, I mean, is clean, I mean, surrounded by salty water and mangrove swamps. So this is what they call the water system. Uh, you are also another structure here also built. So here is also another structure. Also another example of a water system. So this was also built and of course, plastered very nice in order to serve as a storage place for water for the Portuguese when they are staying here in this island. So it was called the water system. I am trying to show you people like how big the island used to be at that time. It was compared to a small Gambian village, a mini village at that time. You can see behind there, the island was like, up. you can see some remains inside the water. It is telling you the island, the water is consuming the island. You can see all those stuff there, 
that are also part of this island here. But because of like the water is trying to you know overtake the island. So the water is trying to consume the island, but the island was very, very big. So these are like white mangrove swamps. You can see white mangrove swamps, they can survive for a long period of time. So they are they serve as storage of water, they are different from the other mangrove swamps. So when the island, before this island was captured by the Portuguese, nothing was built in this island. It was an empty flat land, surrounded with what they call white mangrove swamps. So in 1456, when they captured the island, they decided to build this island. In 1651, they contracted people to come and build this island. So these structures here, before they built these structures, the island was a flat land. Our local women or men were asked to pound what is called oyster cell in order to plaster. This place very nice. So this is telling you that the African is very, very strong at that time. They were using our indigenous people to pound oyster cell because there was no cement at that time. So they used oyster cell in order to build these structures that we are seeing over there. So this also, this is, these are our trees. These trees that you are seeing here, they are not indigenous trees here found here in the Gambia, but they are brought in by the Portuguese. They came from a country called Madagascar. That was the country in which they are brought in, and when they brought them there, they are able to survive. So their root can penetrate deep into the ground, maybe 400 meters deep in the ground. So there are trees that are not found here in this country, but they are brought here by the Europeans from Madagascar. So this was what I was trying to explain. These structures, as you can see, they are very, very strong. So they were built with the use of what they call oyster cells. And these oyster cells were pounded by our local women here in this country. So the white man, they were using our African people and forced them to walk in this, in this, in, in this island for, for several years now. So they were forced to found this, this, this oyster cell and they use this oyster cell now to build this structure. So as you can see, this is a, a signboard which has been placed here by the then president Tia Jame. So in 2011, Jermaine Jackson came here to explore about what happened in this country. And of course, he is the one who came with the name of Kunta Kinte Island. But then it was called James Island. When the Portuguese left this island uh, to, 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 to Batos, or when Batos was founded, they left this island and they all traveled to Banyul called Batos at that time. So it was in 2011 when the name of the island was changed from James Island now to Kunta Kinte Island. So the, this island now is formally called Kunta Kinte Island. So as you can see, this is Kunta Kinte Island. This is the tabla here or the plaque which has been placed here to identify now the island is formally called Kunta Kinte Island. Now, coming to show you the, the model or the structure of the fort, how the fort was built, that is the design of the fort at that time. So, this is the structure of the fort, how the fort was designed by the, uh, the, 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 the Portuguese at the time when the island was captured. So, just like this was the entire island. Now, so this was the things that they built. This was the structure which was built in this island, the structure that we are seeing here. So now, this is the, the main, the main uh, gate of the island as you can see here and then here you have the governor's house then you have the governor's kitchen then you have the slave house and of course you can see but you can realize that half of this part is now is been taken by the by, 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 by the sea or by the river so we are left with only small port this is the only person that we are left with now in this island so this was how the British and uh, the Europeans used this design to establish this fort here called the structure of the fort but the fort was built by the Portuguese in 1456 so the model of the fort and zoom it if you wish to see how the fort was designed by the Europeans in this country at that time. All right, so this is the this is the the map of the the Gambia, trying to show you how you can easily locate here this island called Kunta Kinta Island. So up here you have Senegambia, and from Senegambia you have what you call you have Batos. From Batos now you cross to what you call Bara, and from Bara now. You come here, when you cross now, you are seeing Albreda. You see Albreda now? So this is Albreda, Jufre, or San Domingo. So now from there, you are moving towards Bintang, and then finally to, um, uh, how to call it, to Kaulak, and then, you know, go to Kazama's end. So this is where it starts, Senegal, towards Banjo. From Banjo, you move to Bara. Then from Bara, then when you cross, then you are now entering into what you call James Island, or Albreda now. So this is just the map of the Gamma, trying to explain how a person can easily locate the island. And then from there, too, this is also another cannon. This also was another cannon implanted here by the Portuguese when it was captured initially. You know, this, uh, uh, this island was very, very um, important because the Portuguese had an interest, the British and then the French. 
So that's why when it was captured initially by the Portuguese, that they had to I mean, implant this cannon so that at least when any European power is coming, then they will fire to show a signal that there are people who already captured this island. So this also 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 um, was among part of the uh, part of the um, cannon, uh, sorry, cannons that we are implanted here by the Portuguese. And then we go there, we have the guard post. So this is called the guard post of the, of the island. So you see, this also our small cannons that were also placed here by the uh, by the Portuguese. So this is called the guard post now. It was also meant in order to torment or to suppress the other European powers from not coming to have access to this island. So this is also very important here. That's why it was placed here by the Portuguese. Now from there also I will take you here. This is also another cannon, also part of the biggest cannon found here in this island called James Island, or now formerly Kunta Kinta Island. It was also another cannon. So this cannon also was placed here so that at least when the Europeans are coming to one direction, then they will fire the cannon. Are you understanding? That's why they decided to place all these cannons here. Because the European powers, they believe in what they call superiority. So that's why when the Portuguese captured this island in 1456, they built this fort. They were attacked by the British and the British took over the island. And of course the French also want to take over the island from the British, but they were unable to. That's why the people of Alberta, they gave them a warehouse. That's where they built the warehouse. And this warehouse, that's where they were bringing goods like cotton, tobaccos, and they were exchanging it with slaves. So this island was finally captured by the British and when they left this island they went and found it but was in 1816. Just to show you how big the island used to be at that time, all this part you can see, they are all part of the island. So these are all um, white mangrove swamps that we are here. So this island was an empty flat land, nothing was here in this island. So the Portuguese when they found this island in 1456, it was a flat land and compared to what they call a small village here in the Gambia. So when they found this island, they built a fort here in this island. So when the fort was built, and in fact when they were building the fort, they were assigning our local women to pound what they call, I mean, oyster cells. And these oyster cells were used to build this fort. That's why this fort now, you can see, they are still here in existence for a long period of time. Why? Because they are very, very strong. So all this part, or part of this part also are all part of the island. So the island was very, very big. So it was very, very big now, but the water is consuming the island. And I'm afraid that in years to come, the island will be no more in existence. So the government government also need to do something in order to maintain this island because it's very, very important. It's very, very important. All right, this is the side, the side of the fort. So we are trying to show you people how the fort used to be. Because sometimes it becomes very difficult for some of you to see the, the, the back side of the fort. So this is the structure of what we are living now in this island called Kunta Kinta Island. So as you can see, the island is reducing in size because the, the water is consuming the island. And I'm of course afraid in years to come, the island will be reduced to a very small, uh, how to call it, portions. So it's very, very important for this island to be preserved because it's a source of income to some people like the tourists and the tourist guides. So it generates revenue, of course, to the Gambian government too. So it's very, very important, especially to the, I mean, the Gambian students to know about the history which, I mean, which uh, took place here in our country. So this was the island in which our ancestors were I mean, I mean, captured and of course brought here in this island. So they were being suppressed for four weeks and some of them, they died in this island. The weaker ones could not make it. They died and they are thrown inside the sea. So it was the survival of the fittest and the strongest. So the place that you are seeing right there, is called the landing site. This was the first landing site built by the Portuguese when it was captured by them. So it was meant like for this when the ship arrived, so that the ship can easily anchor to transport the ship to Gore Island and then to America, Brazil, and of course to South Carolina. So this is the back portions of what they call Kunta Kinte Island here, right in the North Bank region of the Gambia, in a village called Albreda Jufre. So we are taking a turn to show you people the entire surrounding of the island. So this is a complete island for that matter. And of course the most important island so far in this country. The island was tragically located. So the Portuguese, the British and of course the French 
both of them had an interest in this island because it was in this island where they will stay for some time it was in this island where they will brought in slaves and of course prepare them to wait for the ship to arrive then when the ship arrived from Senegal to Gore Island then finally taken to America so right now we are taking our way back to Albreda or the coast of Albreda to complete our how to call it our videos in there so this is the complete structure of the island but it was used to be bigger than this before but you know it is like nature and then the water is consuming the island and the condition of the island is dilapidating and the structures also I'm afraid that they may end up falling down because they are old now so this is what they called San Domingo which was changed to Andu Island then from Andu Island to James Island and in 2011 the name of the island was changed by German Jackson, a brother of, I mean, how to call it, Michael Jackson, to Kunta Kinte Island. And now all the government people do call this island as Kunta Kinte Island in order to remember about the Mandingo warrior Kunta Kinte, who was born in a village called Jufre in 1750. He was taken to America on the 6th of September by a boat called Lord Lagon and with a capital, captain called David. So Kunta said finally to the Gambia because he never returned to the Gambia. And when he was taken to uh, America, his name was changed from Kunta to Tubi. So he got married to a wife, a Gambian slave called Fanta, whose name was changed to uh, Belly. So they get married and then they have a daughter called Kizzy. So Kizzy also was raped by Tom Lee, the owner of the plantations. So when she was raped, she gave birth to what they call Chicken George. And the, 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 the line continued. So finally it was Alex Haley who finally came here in this country a great great grandson of Kunta Kinte called Alex Haley he was the one who came here in the country in order to know the origin of their ancestors so this is just a brief history about who Kunta and his family were and a brief history about the structure of the Kunta Kinte island and now saying goodbye for now